He is risen. Yeah, what a great, great truth. Oh, my goodness. Man, it's time to celebrate. It's time to rejoice the fact that Jesus Christ is alive. And guess what? If he's not in a tomb, he's here. He's here. A little boy was on the way to church with his parents. He didn't want to go. And the parents said, yes, we got to go today. It's Easter. And they said, this is when Jesus walked out of the tomb. He's not there. And the little boy says, is he going to be in church? <laughs> yep, he's in church. Another teacher was teaching her kids. She said, okay, boys and girls, when Jesus walked out of the tomb, where did he go? And nobody answered. She said, he went to a happy place. He went to a place where everybody wants to go. And the kid said, oh, he went to Florida? Yes, where everybody wants to go. Man, what a truth. And to have a talk box up here. And that's Xavier who's playing that. That's Jarian's brother. I think he can hear you somewhere. Uh, and it, Look, if you didn't know what that was, you didn't know Peter Frampton. You didn't know some of the old school players. Some of you thought it was a hookah he was on, right? I know you did. I said, we're going to make sure we know that's not what that was. Man, bring every instrument you got to the house because this is the day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know it's not necessarily a good day for everybody. Let me explain what I mean. This day was a sad day for especially the women who followed Jesus. They were the first ones to show up that morning. And they came to do one thing to remember and honor their dead friend. And so they brought spices, they brought ointment. All four Gospels tell the story that we're going to look at this morning. And they tell it from different perspectives. I mean, they, they each have their own kind of, you know, ideas. It's the same story. There's no inconsistency. They just tell it from different perspectives. Like a diamond has several facets. Well, they came to the tomb on the way, according to Mark's Gospel, they said, who's going to roll the stone away for us? You know, I always thought that was a, a big deal. I mean, my goodness, how did that stone move? Well, they were made to move. And so what would happen is the stone would be rolled away, usually by people who were there, so you could get into the body to do the anointing and whatever. And so they're thinking, hey, we, we can't roll it away. Who's going to roll it away? Mark's gospel actually said an angel rolled it away and then sat on top of it. I like that angel. They got there, and the stone wasn't there, and they went in, and Jesus wasn't there. Now, in that moment, we just celebrated it. They were heartbroken, and they looked at one another, and then all of a sudden, they saw these two guys. You ever been somewhere, and all of a sudden, you think, oh, there's somebody else in here, and there they were in dazzling white, and they looked at them, and all they knew to do was bow. They knew there's something big happening here, and the women bowed. And what did those angels say? One of them said, why are you looking for somebody who's alive where only dead people are? She said it in the King James, why seekest thou the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember what he said? And immediately they remembered what he said and they went and told the disciples. Now that's the account in Luke chapter 24. If you've got a Bible or if you've got a device, get, get it turned on, Luke 24, 1 through 12. I want us to read it in honor of what this day means. And the question that I want to put before you as we, as we talk about it is this. Easter is all about hope. So where are you going to find hope? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? There's only one place to find hope, and that is the one who overcame death, the one who is risen today. His name is Jesus. And my prayer is, whoever's in this room, whoever is on this stream and watching TV 45, and we're so glad you are watching with us, we want you to know that hope that Jesus can change your life. Let's stand together. I'm going to read starting verse 1, and we'll read through verse 12 
Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like an idle tale, and the apostles didn't believe. But Peter rose, and he ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloth by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. And may we never stop marveling at what happened. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated. So imagine these women. And imagine what it was like that moment. Easter is all about hope. It is what pivots from death to life. I mean, it's what can take a marriage that is dead and bring life. It's what can take a life that is totally ruined and bring life. Easter is all about hope. And I don't know where you are, and I don't know what it is that you have experienced in these days. But I promise you, there is hope today. His name is Jesus, and he's here. He's alive. So imagine these women. There they are. They're they're looking for a body. They watched him die. In fact, they may have been the only ones who were there for both the the death, the burial, and now the resurrection. They heard him cry, it is finished from the cross. They saw the pain. They also saw him when he was beaten. They saw him when he was betrayed. They knew about one named Judas who sold him for 30 pieces of silver. They also knew the Romans were against them. They knew the Jews and the Jewish leaders were against them. They knew the world was against them. And they couldn't do anything on Saturday because it was the Sabbath. So they went to their homes and they did nothing. Can you imagine what Saturday was like for those ladies? As they anxiously awaited that Sunday morning because they wanted to honor the one who had given them life, the one who had given them hope. But now hope's dead. And so they show up thinking that their biggest issue was the stone. That wasn't the biggest issue. There was no body to anoint and then they see the angels and the angels say what are you doing here looking for the living among the dead so as I say that it just seems to me nothing in their life was where it was supposed to be well first of all Jesus wasn't supposed to be in a grave he's supposed to be delivering Israel he was the savior I mean he was going to be the one who overthrew Rome he was going to be the one that set them free This time last week on Palm Sunday, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What does that mean? Save us. And now he's dead. Then they get there, and the stone is not in its place. And then they look in where Jesus should be, and he's not in his place. Think about it. Everything in their life was not where they were supposed to be. You ever had a day where nothing was where it was supposed to be? You ever had a day where every moment there was something surprising? First of all, your keys were not where (laughs) they were supposed to be. And immediately, what do you do, guys? You blame your wife. Okay, where did you put my keys? We always got to blame somebody. You've had those days. I've had those days when nothing was normal, and we felt so weird and so different. That's exactly what they felt. And I just think we've been through a season of that. It's not normal. And I know everybody talks about the new normal. Well, it may be new normal, but it's not normal. And and it's just different. Some of you lost jobs during COVID. What's normal about that? 
That's not what it's supposed to be. Some of you had dreams of where you would be at this stage in your life and, and what you were going to be doing and how your family was going. And my goodness, you have not accomplished any of it. Your dreams have been crushed. Your dreams have been destroyed. For some of you, you never imagined that you personally would be where you are today. There's so much about the story that's not right. And it's so upside down, just like life, just like we experience. And, and can I just tell you, I'm so glad you came today. Because the fact that you're here, at least you, there's got to be something normal this year. We're going to church on Easter. And that's great. I mean, I'm so glad. Look at this. We miss this. It just feels great to see people in this house and people that are streaming and watching now on TV 45 to know we're able to celebrate his resurrection. I got a, uh, a note that a woman received in South Carolina. It was from the government, from the Department of Health and Human Services. This is the note. I'm going to read it verbatim. Your food stamps will be stopped effective March 31st because we received notice that you passed away. May God bless you. You may reapply if your circumstances change. That's our government. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes your circumstances aren't going to change. Especially when you go there, when you die. But here's the question. Do you feel like your circumstances can change? Do you feel hope? Because these women were there and they were, they were like, we don't, we don't know where to turn. Can I just tell you, when you find yourself in that place, when life has really disappointed you, and things that once lived now died, you've had to say goodbye to some of the greatest people you know. Who is ready for death? Who, how do you get ready to say goodbye to somebody in your family? My goodness, they've been there all your life. And then you're going to face the reality of living without them in your life? How do you get ready for that? Well, I want us to learn two simple lessons from this story. Number one, don't be looking in the wrong places. Don't look in the wrong place for hope. They went to a cemetery to find a living being. When's the last time a friend called you up and said, hey, let's have coffee and let's go over off Good Homes to that cemetery. We'll just sit out there and have coffee. You don't go to a cemetery unless you're honoring the dead, right? It's not where you hang out. So why are you looking for hope where there's only death? Why do we turn to a world that has disappointed us over and over and over? Oh, yeah, the government's going to fix it. Nope, sorry. You're not going to get the fix there. For some of you, it's, well, if I get that job, I, I hope you get that job. I really do. But that job is not going to bring hope and peace. And I just think we've placed our hopes, literally, in all the wrong places. We're looking for a living person in a cemetery. He's not there. And so you turn and you watch this unfold and you realize they know that, that there's nothing about this that's making sense, but they're about to have their world rocked forever. And I just pray today, you walk out of here and say, you know what, I appreciate the media, but it's not where I get my hope. In fact, we get your news stream. I don't know which stream you're on or which media sources you have. Let's all watch our media sources, and then we'll go jump off the bridge together. That's about the way you feel. You're depressed. You're discouraged. You're like, gosh, what is going on in this world? There's just absolutely no hope. That's what the media gives you. Now, that's not all that. But I'm just telling you, there's only one place you get hope. And that's not at a grave. That's in the presence of a risen Savior who is in this room today. He's here. That's hope. That's where we find hope. So don't look in the wrong places. And the second thing, remember what he said. Do you hear what the angel said? They said, now why are you looking for somebody who's alive here? And the second thing the angel said was, remember what he said? In fact, two times in three verses, 
the word remember is used. Remember what he said? And then the verse says, they remembered it. So what did he say? He said this was going to happen. Do you realize that Jesus told his disciples, and I'm, I'm believing these women were a part because they traveled with him. They financed a lot of the movement of Jesus across the country. He told them five times he was going to die, he was going to be buried, and he was going to be raised again to new life. Five times. Any of y'all have kids, you have to tell them more than once something? <laughs> you know what that means. They just couldn't get it. Remember his words. This story that we're talking about today started a long time ago. It started in a place called the Garden of Eden in Genesis. When God made this perfect place, and I mean, he made this incredible garden. And the best way I know how to tell you how great that place was, Chick-fil-A was open on Sunday. I mean, it was (laughs) everything you wanted. It was there. And then what happens? Adam and Eve sinned. I didn't say Eve. I said Adam and Eve. When Eve was doing that deal with the devil, Adam was standing right there. I think he was looking for his phone or remote or something, but he, he was there. They both failed. And what happened when sin entered? It changed everything. Separated us from the God who made us. The one who created us. The one who made us for life. Now there's separation. So what does, do? what does God do? Give up. I'm done with them. Nope. From Genesis through Revelation. In 66 books, there is a story of God's love for you. Every page of this book we call the Bible is literally filled with stories about God's love for man, God's love for his creation, God's love for you. God didn't give up. He pursued us. The patriarchs showed us how to live. Then the judges that led the people of Israel showed us how to live. And then the prophets. And then finally in the fullness of time, Jesus came. God in the flesh. To show us how to live and to save our soul. And he did something for us nobody could ever do. He died on a cross for his sin? No. For your sin. For my sin. Why? To remove it. To seek the forgiveness of God. And literally, he took our punishment and the separation was placed on him. Why? So we could open, have an open door to God. And so when I say, remember what he said, remember what he said. The story's here. It's all here. So why do we forget? Why do we, like they, forget? Oh, yeah, he he told us this. Well, I mean, a lot of reasons we forget. I love to tell the story about the little boy and little girl that used to go to their grandparents, stay in the the country for the summer. And they loved staying there. Well, Grandma had a duck. She loved her pet, her favorite animal was a duck. And so one day, the little boy was out playing, and he had a slingshot, and he's shooting stuff, and he shot the duck. Killed it. I mean, dead. It just was done. So what does he do? He panics he digs a grave for grandma's duck he buries it and he thinks nobody saw me she didn't see me I'm all good and he he looks up and there's his sister looking at him (laughs) for the rest of the summer when she had a chore she didn't want to do she'd say hey I think he wants to do it and he'd go no I don't she'd go remember the duck And he was a prisoner to her all summer long. And finally, the end of the story is grandma came to him one day and said, I saw the duck. I know the duck is dead. But I forgive you. Can I just tell you, Satan is here to remind you, remember the duck. Remember the mistakes you made. Remember the things you've done wrong. Remember the sin. Think about this. When these women were standing there, one of them was Mary Magdalene. You know who Mary Magdalene was? We don't know for sure. She had seven demons. Seven is the number of perfection or completion. There are many who believe she was totally consumed by demons. Now, was she a prostitute? Was she a streetwalker, a woman of the night? We we don't know. We have no idea. But she could have been any of those. And isn't it amazing that the angel looked at her and said, Remember your sin. 
Not what the angel said. What did the angel say? Remember his word. Remember what he said. In other words, today, yeah, there's a voice telling you, oh, you've messed up. What are you doing in church on Easter? You don't have any right to be there. That's not where you should be. And they're just telling you, remember the duck. Well, can I just tell you what you need to say to them? No, I remember the cross. I remember the tomb. And I remember Jesus is alive and well today. He did that for me. So I remember. You know how we buy things when we go places? And as kind of just a little memory, you know, like we have folks visiting. There's a great family here from Little Rock that I got to meet a minute ago. Uh, I really, actually, I, I knew them. I baptized her when she was eight years old back in Arkansas. I mean, it was just so cool to reconnect with them and their family. Well, they came down to visit. Like many of you uh, have friends that do, or maybe you're one of those that visits. How many stuffed Shamus have left Orlando? I mean, my goodness, everybody's got to, if you go to SeaWorld, you got to get a stuffed Shamu. You go to Disney, you got to get the ears. You go to Universal, you got to get something from the Avengers or whatever to, to, to remember it. Why do we do stuff like that? It connects us to a memory. It connects us to something good. I mean, it's, it's a fun thing. I think I have objects in my office that are great, that remind me. Like, I've got a lot of stuff from Israel that, that I got in Israel, and I don't know, I can just look at it and I can tell you the story behind it. Well, Danny and I got to go this Monday to see a, a member of this church who's dying. His name is Steve Vogt, Dr. Vogt. He's a, a physician, been a member of this church for a long time, and um, he's one of the most brilliant men I've ever known. One of the greatest men I've ever known, actually. And they, his wife called and said, you know, he's, he's in the hospital or in hospice and it's not going to be long. So I just wanted to tell him bye. And so on Monday, Danny and I went in, and we got a chance to just be there with him. And I got a chance to thank him for everything that he meant for me, to me, and to this church, and to the kingdom. And so we had an incredible moment. It was sad, and, and we cried, but we had our moment. And, and I got back to the office, and so I was thinking about today and about memory. How, remember his words. He, we have things to help us remember. And I thought, I'm going to take one of my objects from my office. So I'm in there looking around, and my assistant says, what is this? And it's a baseball that's encased. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And when I looked at it, all of a sudden, I realized who it was from. You see his name? Steve Vogt, the man we had just visited. And this ball will forever stay in my office. You know why? I don't ever want to forget a man like that. And this helps me remember. This helps me remember. What if God gave us all those feasts in the Old Testament? Why did he give them? To remember. To remember what he had done. What if he gave us Easter? What if he gave us this celebration so that we could remember what he said? And I just think today is a great day to remember. And some of you are in that place of struggling and you're, you're trying to remember. And, and I want to tell you, it's okay. Because Jesus meets us where we are, not where we should be. He meets you where you are. He met them there. He was at the tomb that day, by the way. John's Gospel says Mary stayed behind. And all of a sudden, there he was. She thought he was the gardener. And Jesus spoke to her. I love the fact that he'll meet you right in the middle of your struggle, right in the middle of your doubt, right in the middle of all the anger you have. He's standing there. So you and I have to choose. Do we believe? Like the women, they believed. They immediately went to tell somebody, went and told the disciples, hey, he's alive. We saw him. He, I know he's alive. The tomb is empty. Some of us in this room have made that decision. I believe. And I will be counted among you because I believe he is risen and he is my Savior and he is my Lord. I believe in the Lord Jesus. But for some, you're not at that point yet. There were some disciples who doubted. They called the story an idle tale. It's actually the Greek word for they were delusional. They were dreaming. They had seen a vision. It wasn't true. There's some of you doubting, and you're not sure about this story and about this reality. That's okay. 
Because if you're truly seeking the truth, you're going to always end up at the feet of Jesus. Then there was another group. His name was Peter. And we know John was with him, according to John's gospel. Peter wondered. He wanted to go see. He was intrigued. He wanted to go check it out for himself. So that's exactly what he did. There's some of you that are at that point. You're like, you know, I want to know more about this. I want to know more about the hope that Jesus brings. I need that in my life today. I'm looking forward to donuts and with David. I think, isn't that the name of it? <laughs> donuts with David. I'm looking forward to that for two reasons. One is donuts. But, but the second reason, I'm going to share my story of how I was like that one day and wondered. I got to just know more about Jesus. And I did learn. And he showed me. And today I believe. So it's okay to be in any of these positions. Three choices. You believe, that's awesome. You're not sure, so you're just kind of staying where you are. That's okay. God will work with you. He'll draw you. We want to help you. And the third, I'm looking at it. I want to check this out. It doesn't matter which one. I just want you to know he is here. And he is here to bring you hope today. Can we bow together, all our heads bowed, just for a moment? So if you're in this room, and you've just heard this story, and you're like the disciples, you're, you're not sure. You may believe it as a fact, but is it real to you? Can I just lead you in a prayer to say, Jesus, I, I want to know you. I want to know you. I, I want to know more. Because, Jesus, I need hope. I need that hope in my marriage. I, I need it in my life. I need it at work, in my business. And so could you be honest and just lift, my, lift your hand so I can see you? I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. All I want you to do is just say, hey, David, pray for me. I, I want to know more about Jesus. and Because I need hope today. Just lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Wherever you are, in the balcony, lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. All across this room, thank you. Can I just pray for you? Lord, you know what our world's been like. And Lord, we've tried to find hope, and we've looked in all the wrong places. But today we're in a room with a whole lot of people who have come to celebrate one truth. Jesus is alive. So, Lord, we believe that's where hope is. And, Jesus, we want to know more. And for these who lifted their hand, would you show them? Your word says whoever calls on you, you're going to save them. So if you raised your hand, and even if you didn't call on him right now, just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe. Jesus, thank you for hope and we believe thank you for changing our life and giving us what the world never could hope in Jesus name now look this way a moment when he walks in your life you have a story you have a testimony and this song captures your story as well as any it just says death was arrested and I now am free. I want you to stand and let's sing our story together as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus.
what happened, everybody? My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. Yeah. When death was a rest in my life. Feel free to throw a hand in the air and say, Oh, your grace. Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. Yeah. My shame was a ransom paid for the Lord. Come on, come on, say this. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my displayed on a criminal's cross come on you take it dark remain standing. <clears throat> Help me thank these guys for leading us today. What an awesome job. For any of you, raise your hand a minute ago or you just inside, you know, I want to, I need to take a step. You do need to take a step. Let me show you. Um, one of our pastors, Doug Pierce, brought me this. He said it, it grew on a tree in his backyard. And so he said, I just wanted to bring it to you. Did it last night. Just gave it to me. My first question was, is it sour or is it sweet? Right? I'm going to ask you, is it sour or is it sweet? You don't know, do you? Is Jesus good? 
You know how you know? Because you tasted and you saw the Lord is good. You tasted. You know. So what I want you to do is take that step. If you've never trusted Jesus, you've never said, Jesus, I want to follow you, you have no idea how awesome he is. So taste and see today. Stop by on either side, one of the lobbies. We have people there with a name tag and a smile. And they want to talk to you about that step of faith. And you can also text us the word hope to 407. See, we changed the word, but not the number, 40777. You text that word, and there's going to be somebody that will have that conversation with you. I just pray you have an incredible day. Enjoy Easter. God bless you. Thank you. He is risen. He is risen indeed.